And our, our last video in the series will be the most difficult for me at least because I'm new to the to this ham radios, but we are doing a series of radio reviews here at the Titan II Missile Museum just south of Tucson, Arizona. I'm actually using their antenna here uh, on my ham radio, which is what we're going to talk about. And uh, right now, though, I'm using my ham radio as a scanner. So really, I'm not transmitting. I'm just scanning all the different frequencies here around Tucson, and I'm able to use their antenna uh, as my input. So we've talked about citizens band radio, we've talked about the family radio service, and then we've talked about the general mobile radio service, the GMRS, and the advantages and disadvantages of those. Last up, we're going to talk about ham radios. And I'm not going to be able to do this as much justice as someone who's more familiar with the ham radios, but at least I can touch on some of my experiences. Uh, I've been a user of CB radios pretty much my whole life. I've used FRS radios as long as they've been around, and I've recently been using the GMRS uh, radios without totally understanding the GMRS licensing. I've almost always had scanners. Uh, my, my family has always had scanners as long as I've been alive. Uh, we've always listened to uh, ambulance and police, uh, news and races and all kinds of stuff, anything that used radios. and. Before cell phones, it was a lot more fun to listen to scanners. If you're familiar with a scanner, it's basically a receiver. It has no transmit, so it's able to listen to a wide range of channels. They're programmed in on these buttons. But with a ham radio, you sort of get the best of both worlds because now we have that elusive talk to push to talk button. So now it's a transceiver. It can actually transmit as well as receive. So what we're looking at with a ham radio is ham is a uh, abbreviation, I guess not really abbreviation, but it's a slang term for amateur radios. Now the amateur radio service is regulated by the FCC and I'll link to some of my notes here in the video description. It is regulated by the FCC. There is a, uh, actually there's a different levels of licensing starting with your uh, <clears throat> starting with your technician class which is what I am right now, then general and then expert and that has changed. It's been different in the past. There are licenses, which means the, the bandwidths that we're able to use are exclusive to ham radio operators, which means it's not legal for someone else to transmit or send messages across those bandwidths. The frequencies are all over the spectrum. The FCC uh, gives amateur radio quite a bit of leeway. It's actually quite enjoyable learning all the things that I have so far as to what kind of responsibilities we have but also what kind of uh, op opportunities we have. There are a lot of radios available so one of the advantages of ham radio uh, in addition to having more privileges and more opportunities than you would with any of the other types of radio are uh, the model of radio that you're able to buy. And since there are so many of them, you have a lot of options from inexpensive used to highly elaborate brand new uh, machines. So you've got handheld, like what I've got in my hand. You've got mobile, which imagine like a car stereo, that type of device that's meant to fit into a vehicle. And then you've got uh, rigs that are designed to sit on a desk in uh, you know, a fixed location. So you've got lots of opportunities to uh, uh, get lots of different kind of radios. Uh, of course, they're modular as far as their antennas and the different accessories for them. There's typically, these are used for um, emergency services and people that are out and about in you know the outdoors. So they're typically just as rugged or more rugged than your walkie-talkie type. And a lot of times your CB radios just aren't as rugged as a, a, a ham radio. Some of the disadvantages, of course, is you do have to pass a test. It's a 35-question uh, test with a possible 300 questions. So there is some studying. However, I can tell you from experience, recent experience, that it's not very difficult. I highly encourage you to do it if you're at all interested, especially with the Internet. It's very easy to uh, accomplish the a, a passing score on the test. Uh, some of the other uh, disadvantages are the cost of radios. You're probably talking $100 or so for one of these, where... A uh, walkie-talkie type, you know, is going to be well under $100. Uh, another disadvantage is, unless you have a lot of friends in your small circle of friends that are into ham radio, you're not going to know very many people that end up using them. 
But on the plus side, there's people all over the world that use them and there's lots of opportunities to meet new people and make friends out there. Ham radio operators seem to be very friendly people, so uh, I'm really looking forward to uh, engaging some conversations with them in the future. Uh, I know I've barely hit the, the surface here, but unfortunately I'm running out of time and I'm new to the, to the ham radio uh, field, so I can't give you too much insight from my own personal experience, but I can tell you that it's definitely uh, an option that you want to look into. Uh, hopefully this series was worthwhile on the various types of radio that are out there. If there's any questions, of course, let us know, and we'll be happy to address them and perhaps make a new video if necessary. So from the Titan II Missile Museum, just outside of Tucson, Arizona, thanks for watching.